Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com and DIY Easy Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at how to make this cellophane wrap crinkled effect in resin. Now this particular uh, project I'm making knife handles, but you can use the exact same techniques uh, for making a variety of different res resin uh, projects. You know, whether it be a, uh, a drink coaster or a platter, almost anything. And it's almost a three-dimensional look that you, you get with this crinkled effect. So let me first say that this is not my idea. I saw it online, um, actually for coasters, and I just thought it would make a knife, uh, a nice knife handle. So I started by pouring uh, the lighter color, in this case yellow. This is a uh, epoxy resin from TotalBoat.com. It is their thick set resin. I, I particularly like this resin because it's very thin um, and it, it allows the bubbles, any trapped bubbles, to easily escape and float up to the surface. Um, anyway, you take a piece of cellophane resin and you lay it across the top surface of the epoxy and then just using your fingers, you crinkle it. And the goal here is to create you know, little mountains, little ridges that's going to be the base for the three-dimensional um, effect of this, of this resin. Um, we're going to let this resin then dry and then peel that cellophane off. So before you walk away from it, just make sure that you've got some nice ridges there. You know, I cut a piece of cellophane, it's probably at least two or three inches larger on all sides. And you can see I played around with it quite a bit. I wanted to get the, um, the edges all the way to the corners and the sides of the mold. And then I went back and uh, you know really played around with, with the pinching until I was happy with it. And once I was, I walked away and let this dry uh, actually for more than 24 hours. I actually left this for two days. Sometimes it, and if you only wait 24 hours, that resin is still a little bit soft. So after 48 hours, the um, cellophane peels off pretty easily. You gotta really make sure you get all of that cellophane. You could, you could easily lose a little piece in there if you're, not, if you're not careful. So the next step is going to be to add uh, the second color. So the, the bottom color um, typically is going to be the lighter of the two, and it's also going to be more opaque. Uh, the top color um, is going to be a little bit more transparent. So I mix this is the same Total Boat uh, Thick Set Epoxy mixed with a little orange uh, tint. And what you want this to do is end up filling in, you know, a lot of the valleys um, and being a little bit more transparent up, you know, towards the, the top of each ridge. So I laid some of the epoxy in there and then I just took a hairdryer, uh, set on low and on, on warm, and I just uh, then he kind of kind of warmed up that resin a little bit and, and blew it uh, into each one of those valleys. And you might have to add a little bit more resin. You don't want to overload it with this resin because you really just want a very thin coat um, so, that, so that it's darker in each one of the, those valleys and uh, you know a little bit lighter up towards the top ridges. And you can play around with this. You can use different colors. Um, I'm thinking about using you know two colors co combined in the base. You could also use a variety of combination of colors uh, for the top coat. So the, the possibilities are, are pretty endless. So I had a little bit more resin and then use that hair dryer to blow it around a little bit more. Um, after I walked away from that and let it dry overnight, uh, then I poured clear resin over the top, and this is the same thick set resin, um, you know, slowly mixed for, for three or four minutes. Um, anytime you work with this resin, you, you want the room temperature to be, you know, somewhere in the 70 degree range. And 
As I mentioned before, this thick-set resin is pretty easy to work with. You don't need a pressure pot. Um, it's so thin that, that the bubbles don't get trapped within the resin. They, they make their way to the surface. Uh, so you end up with a nice uh, clear coating or clear resin casting um, without having to use a pressure pot or without having to have a compressor. You can see here I also did the exact same technique with a combination of a blue and a white background. So once again, you walk away for you know 48 hours, let that resin completely dry, and then you can pop it out of the mold. And this is going to be the finished product. You've got a nice 3D combination of, of yellow and orange uh, coated with a clear resin surface, which makes it nice and nice and glossy. Now you can do a variety of things with this. If you were making drink coasters, you would pop them out of the mold and, and you know, basically be done, except for maybe cleaning up the edges and adding some felt. Um, at, my hobby is making custom knives, so I wanted to make knife handles um, out of this resin. Uh, the resin machines very easily. You know, I was able to uh, use my, my 2x72 grinder to profile uh, that material into the, the shape of the handles. Um, I used that same sander or, or belt grinder uh, to shape the handles, to curve uh, that, that top edge, make it comfortable in your hand. And then I polished it. You know, I, I sanded with 120 grit, and then I went to a uh, oscillating sander, and I, um, I sanded with a 220, a 400, a 600, a 1,000, and a 2,000. Uh, it's actually a pretty quick process. Uh, you don't have to spend a, a tremendous amount of time with each grit. And then I did do some hand sanding in between. So every time I took um, you know, one of the sanding discs off the oscillating sander, I did some hand sanding with that grit. And um, you know, finished it off uh, with the 2,000 grit. And then I went over to a buffing wheel with a little uh, buffing compound and just polished that, that resin material right up. Very pleasantly surprised with the outcome. Um, you know, it's a very unique uh, set of handles. Um, you know, if you, if you look deep inside, you can see that there are uh, three-dimensional valleys and, and ridges. Um, and as I said before, you know, the creative um, technique here can be used with a variety of different colors. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, by all means, check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com and be sure to check out um, my other knife projects at BergKnifeMaking.com. Thank you very much.